Live, this is Bob Desmond, and what we're going to talk about tonight are the um, opening price action of the futures action. We're going to take a look at economic data that's coming out this week, what was released last week. We'll talk a little bit about the jobs report that was released on Friday. We'll talk about the Federal Reserve, the Fed funds rate, and we'll talk about inflation or deflation. What are we, uh, what are we seeing on the horizon now, I've been a, a, a vocal proponent that I didn't think inflation was going to go away anytime soon. I've done a lot of studying over the weekend, and I'm beginning to shift opinions some. Is it time to sell gold? Is it time to sell the gold mining stocks? We're going to talk about that as well. So let's uh, kick it off with A. I did uh, best stock charts for the new trading week, by and large. All but uh, one was a short uh, we also did the 30-Minute Chart Club uh, yesterday. Catch the replay on YouTube or on the website. If you're not a member of the 30-Minute Chart Club, it's really been pretty cool. Uh, join up. Uh, you need to – it's a, it's a private uh, live stream, and the reason why it's private is to avoid spammers, uh, to keep it uh, amongst only serious traders. I don't care if you're an experienced trader or inexperienced trader. It doesn't matter to me. I just want people that are serious. And we're also building up our email list just in case YouTube and I decide to part ways. They demonetize a couple of videos. Uh, if they decide that they're going to cut me off one day for I, me saying something wrong that I even really realized was bad, well, I have an email list where I can communicate with people and say, okay, here's what we're doing next. So link below. I also have uh, a five-part video series on my top five favorite candlestick patterns i got some feedback from 30 minute chart club some inexperienced folks questioning you know what am i talking about with a bullish key reversal bearish engulfing uh five-part video tutorial free of charge down below it'll walk you through all of those chart patterns so let's kick things off with saying hello to people in the comments section and we have franklin welcome brother tim welcome Denny, welcome. TF Hatter, good evening to you, sir. All right, let's kick it off by sharing my screen immediately before I forget to do so. Hopefully the audio is coming in well. And a quick glimpse here. I have the Dow up up top, lower left, 10-year yield, 10-year yield. Following through on last week's movement, which was up. We're going to want to keep an eye on this. The dollar. This is a problem. The dollar is moving up higher. It's a big gap up. 103 spot 12 on the Dixie. And the VIX is moving up higher as well. And this is what I was pretty much concerned about going into Friday's close. We had a big move on the dollar. We kind of expected it to come. And this is not good. Uh, Dow futures are down 0.28%. These are all 15-minute charts. Let's go to the big screen. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ. Again, 15-minute chart. NASDAQ gapping down slightly. Actually, not slightly. We're down over a half percentage point. You can see here that we have a head and shoulder setup forming. Left shoulder, head right shoulder a little bit of an anomaly here but i think that th that's what we're setting up for is a head and shoulders break on the nasdaq let's revisit the dow the dow is coming a little bit off of its lows russell 2000 at the open uh down spot four zero percent another gap down Let's go to the spiders. Let's 
spiders gapping down. Down about a third of a percentage point. So you began to see a break on Friday with this lower high, right? You had a double top here on Thursday, and then on Friday you got a lower high and then a break to a new lower low. So you're beginning to see momentum build or or weakness build here in equities. Now, let's revisit the U.S. dollar. Uh, the U.S. dollar last week had a major run. Now, we're going to be running into some resistance shortly. This is a four-hour chart on the dollar. We may get a brief retracement. That may allow for gold and the mining stocks to rally a little bit. My guess is, is that gold is going to be down at current. Back to a 15-minute chart. That's up, actually. They moved it down, and now they're bidding it up. RSI gaining some strength. All right. That's good to see. Sticking with the precious metal trade for a while. Let's go to silver. Silver is down. They had a really nice daily setup forming on silver, and then it just broke. I think it was on Friday, silver broke. To energy, natural gas catching a bid. It's about time. Let's go to a four-hour view here. We have a position in... uh, Natural gas to the long side, it is not treated as well. So we had a breakout. We continue to drift lower here. RSI beginning to break out. Stokes beginning to hook up. Maybe we'll catch a bid into tomorrow. Uh, If we rally up into uh, a three-handle, I'm going to look to exit the trade. Natural gas is so weak. Let's go to light sweet crude. Crude catching a bid. We're going to talk more about crude prices in a moment. I don't think that this rally is going to last. Uh, We'll go to the chart and I'll explain why in a little while. But uh, oil prices catching a bid. Let's go to uh, home heating oil. Catching a bit as well. Still flat, though, for by and large. Uh, Copper price. We're going to go to a a weekly chart here for the industrial metals. You know, before we even leave home heating oil, this is a weekly chart. Look at the break here. We're going to be talking a lot about energy prices and commodities, deflation versus inflation, and you know, when I when I see a breakdown like this, uh, you, you got to say, hey, the path of least resistance appears to be changing and there may be more downside here. Now, looking at copper prices, copper prices, which were doing very, very well and still are in an uptrend, hit the upper band of resistance, backed off. The question is now, Do we break support? Uh, Let's take a look at uh, food prices. I should have cattle up here. Yep. Cattle prices doing good. Is this this week or last week? That's last week's price action. 
Uh, so protein price is still moving up aggressively. Now moving on to agriculture, corn prices still holding a breakout. They were down last week. The path of least resistance remains up at current. Soybeans continue to behave well. A higher highs last week, and we're looking for a breakout on soybeans. Now, wheat, which has been very weak during 2022 and into 2023, beginning to catch a bid now. We have a breakout in RSI. I think that is it. Let's take a quick view again at equity prices. Let's bring up the NASDAQ 100. All right, so we're pretty weak here. We're down below a support level. VIX continues to gain momentum. Dollar coming off a little bit with yields continuing to move to the upside. Okay, so that was, that, that's the futures action. Let's check back in with those that are joining in. Uh, Yoga Mac. Hey, brother. Jeff, seems like Thursday was a blow off top. Commodities look horrible. They do. Yes. Uh, macro influence with the balloon thing. <laughs> ah, man. That would talk about in your face. That was terrible. That was terrible. I'm wondering if natural gas was the leader, canary in the coal mine, and now everything follows. Uh, that's, a, that's a valid theory. It's a very valid theory. Hey, Paul. Uh, waiting on China for direction, fallout maybe? I don't think so. I think they were probing our defenses. They made a fool of us, and I think they're laughing right now. Uh, yeah, short, uh, yeah, the short QQQs, yep. Like that. Um, Bob, do you have any projections or predictions on volume this upcoming week? Uh, we'll go over seasonality, but in terms of volume, not quite sure. That's really, uh, I, I wouldn't know how to predict that, to be honest with you. But uh, we can we can take a look at seasonality. Uh, I didn't think there was much volume on Friday. Well, we could take a look. We could take a look. Okay. <clears throat> so looking back here, Qs are holding on to the support level. I'm going to set up an alert here. I want to know if we break to new lower lows. VIX still behaving aggressively. Okay. All right, so the Federal Reserve met last week. The Fed meets this is from Charlie Biello on Twitter. He posts a lot of good stuff. Uh, the Fed meets again on March 22nd. The market is pricing in a high probability 83% of another 25 basis points. That would be the ninth rate hike in a row and bring the Fed funds rate up to 4.75 to 5%. This is pretty much the target that the Federal Reserve has been seeking. There's something called the terminal rate. And they, they believe that they're probably at that terminal rate. If not at it now, they will be in March. Now, uh, I th I've been wondering what the, what the, what the crux of uh, the sell-off was going to be. I, I've been a firm believer that the, the U.S. equity market was going to have a rally. Uh, I believe there was going to be a Santa Claus rally. That didn't really happen, but we did have a major rally into the new year. So I've been saying short-term bullish on the market, longer-term bearish. That's now changing. So 
uh, I think that the, the 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 reason why the the economy is in all probability going to roll over and roll over really hard along with equity markets is because while 2022 was the year of rate hikes, 2023 is when the rate hikes caused the damage to the economy. So if the Federal Reserve says in, let's say in May, that they want to begin to cut rates, which they're not saying they want to do. Let's just, let's say they want to do that. They want to cut rates. It takes six months for that to impact the economy. And you have to wonder, okay, if they're pivoting, what's wrong with the economy and what kind of hell are we going to see coming down the pike that's going to impact uh, equities, et cetera? So just because the Federal Reserve pivots, usually that's when the U.S. equity market begins to really break down and break down hard. Are we there yet? Not quite sure. You could argue that last week was the beginning of a pivot. Now, a bit of a uh, a bit of a, a wrench in the uh, cog. On Friday, we had the jobs report that came out. It reported 517,000 job gains. I do not believe this. They've been pulling this stuff for several months now. And I'm very, very reluctant to call BS on government statistics because once you go down that road where you can't trust the, the statistics, you know, there's really no coming back. So, you know, and the, and the reason why I call BS on this is because constantly, this is the establishment survey, right? But the household survey only reported, this is for January, 160,138 new jobs relative to 517,000. That's the establishment survey. This divergence has been going on for the past two years. And before uh, the Biden administration, these two reports would trade, by and large, in lockstep. Maybe there was a little bit of a divergence, but not a major, a gap. So uh, these they're, they're, they're overcounting jobs, and they even had to come out. The BLS came out about three months ago, reported that they overstated one million jobs. So... You know, be careful with these numbers. I don't believe them anymore. And we need to take it at a grain of salt because, you know, you take a look at the ADP report last week, and the ADP report only reported 106,000 new jobs. And that was far below the expectation of 190,000 new jobs. So take these numbers out of the BLS with a grain of salt. Unfortunately, I don't want to be the one to say that, but you have to now. Uh, this coming week, we have economic data coming up. Not much, really. Really not much at all. Jobs jobs claims on Thursday, we get that each week. You miss inflation expectations. That's not a big number. So not much to really focus on. What will be coming out hot and heavy Earnings. Uh, by and large, the big names are behind us. We still have a few semiconductor names coming up uh, this week. Uh, I'm not going to be trading any earnings reports. Uh, Chipotle, Under Armour, Yum Brands, Wendy's, which had a really good chart a few weeks ago. Disney comes out, PayPal, Cloudflare, which I usually trade on earnings. We usually do pretty well. I'm not going to play that. So, Earnings hot and heavy this week. Now, for the for the past two and a half months, I've been saying the markets are moving up. They're going to move up higher. And I, I've changed my tune quite a bit. We're actually going into the new trading week, really net short the market in our trading account. And you can see here, this is the triple Qs. And the triple Qs last week hit a brick wall of resistance up at the 315 mark. And it also pierced its upper band of the rising uptrend channel. Now, can it pull back to the lower band, consolidate, and then move back up? Yeah. Yeah. But right now, short term, we're looking bearish at the market. We think that the money's going to be made to the bear side, to the short side. And that's the way we're positioned at current. And even our watch stocks for the new trading week, by and large, are Short names with one name that is an extreme oversold stock. We're going to look to trade to the upside. And that video was posted on the website and on YouTube. I published it yesterday. Schiller PE ratio. 
Now, we, we, we closed out the week back above 30 on valuations. These are the trailing valuations. So stocks are very, very expensive. And there's a, another way of you looking at the metrics. And that's this. S&P gap EPS growth year over year declining aggressively. And when you take a look at, forget about price to earnings, price to sales, this blew my mind. Microsoft, 9.5 times sales. Shocker. And it's only sporting a 29 hand only. It's sporting a 29 handle on a PE metric. I mean, mind-blowingly expensive. A return to the head smack and craziness, hedge fund billionaire Singer warns bear market is not over. I concur. And I'll, I'll focus in on a couple of points he makes here. And it's pretty consistent with what we've been saying for a while now. More than a decade of aggressive monetary and fiscal policies can't be unwound in a year. He explained, drawing parallels to ballooning debts as potentially wreaking havoc, rivaling the Great Depression, despite growing hope for a soft landing. Singer 78 added, many valuation metrics, which we just went over, in the market remain higher than in 1929 or the dot-com bubble. I traded the dot-com bubble. It was not a pretty event. It was a two-year massive bear market. So. We're very, very expensive. We never did get quite up to, I don't agree with this. Uh, we never did get up to the dot-com, yeah, PE ratios. So that's actually inaccurate. We want to be accurate here. Now, why do I think that the Federal Reserve is overdoing it? And why do I believe that the Federal Reserve is going to be the culprit they are going to get the blame for this this next leg down in the market look no further than their balance sheet their balance sheet is dropping like a rock and that's fine it's a good thing it shouldn't have been this big to begin with but when you add in there this is like a stealth tightening in addition to rate hikes when you take a look at money supply year over year this is the first time since 1960 that year over year money supply has actually gone negative so if you believe and this is where we begin to segue into okay are we going into inf more inflation hyperinflation or perhaps disinflation and deflation well when i saw this my head spun because it's the government that causes inflation and they do it by printing too much money and they did it back here in 19 and 20, 21. Now they're sucking it all back out of the system. And you saw a negative year over year. So if printing all that money was inflationary, then why wouldn't it be deflationary or at least disinflationary for the reduction of M2 money supply to impact the economy? So this is why I'm thinking that, you know what, the Federal Reserve may in all actuality be overdoing it. Uh, Powell envisions himself being a Paul Volcker, but he's far more aggressive than Paul Volcker ever was. And I didn't think he was going to be, to be honest with you. And he's doing it when you have the leading economic indicators. This is put out by the Federal Reserve. They know about this because they publish it. Leading economic indicators are negative. And there's never been an exception where, where this has gone negative, where we have not had a recession. So he's continuing to raise rates into a recessionary environment supported by two back-to-back -back quarters last year of negative GDP, supported by leading economic indicators, and supported by the yield curve, which last week put in new monthly lower lows folks this is another barometer 
for the economy. And it's not good that the yield curve continues to invert very, very heavily. So it doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to get a massive economic contraction as this is inverting. But once it begins to steepen, steepen up nastily, folks, buckle up. It's going to be a very, very sharp drop down once this gets going in the wrong direction. And I mean to the upside. Overlaid here in gray is the S&P 500. Let me make sure that's accurate. I believe it is. Yes. And, of course, we have gold overlaid in gold. And every time we've steepened in the past, you've seen equities drop like a rock. This is 2000. Here's the financial crisis steepening. Equities drop like a rock. Here we are yet again. Equities moving up towards their upper band of their trading range. And you have the yield curve, which is still inverted. And you have a Federal Reserve, which is tightening rates. And they have no intention of stopping anytime soon. So when you take a look at the market and you say, okay, where are we at? I know we already went over this. We're going to revisit it. Where are we at technically with all of this other data to have support our short thesis of the market? Well, we hit resistance last week. We backed off at 310. What was the high of the week? Uh, high of the week was 313.68. So we hit resistance, we backed off, we closed back down and into this uptrend channel. The problem is, is that we close at, at the upper band of that resistance level, daily view. So here's a reversal bar on Friday. Might we pull back to 300, consolidate and then move back up higher, taking another shot at 315? Yeah, yeah. Uh, who am I? But if we begin to break down below these lower bands of support on a daily and on a weekly time frame, you had better bet your bottom dollar. We're going to be loading up on short. So if you're not currently a member, join up. We send out trade alerts. All right. So other reasons why the lovely Trish. Hello, Trish. How are you? Uh, Yoga Mac, I bet you got a good view on Long Island Bob. Uh, I, I, I haven't looked at it tonight. I'll check it out later on. I need to go to the store anyway. Okay. So let's just be careful here of this market. We are at resistance and we're beginning to see a little bit of weakness. We're seeing it in the futures action right now. Now, more indications that we're seeing some deflationary pressures on the economy. And you may be saying, you know, well, isn't that a good thing? Yeah, it is a good thing for the consumer. The problem is, is that it's not great for equities because there's something wrong with the economy. It's, 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 a, it's putting pressure on growth. And it's going to put pressure on uh, the ability of companies to grow earnings. And we're already expensive on the market to get uh, – less expensive we need to get to get fairly valued we need to drop dramatically because earnings growth is slowing so this is the crb published by reuters the crb commodity index you could see that this is a monthly chart not insignificant we were in a strong uptrend that uptrend is now broken and we appear ready to move lower here at worst consolidate at best the baltic dry sea index plummeting this is an indicator that you're seeing less dry bulk shipments and is a problem with the supply chain. And this is a measure of, of, of shipping rates for dry bulk shippers. And this should be in a global, uh, global economy, a healthy global economy rising. It is not. It is contracting. Another indication of potential deflation. The U.S. dollar. I've warned about this going into last week. We may get a rally in the U.S. dollar. Man, we got a rally in the U.S. dollar. And I think that the dollar is sniffing out a couple of things. Uh, one, there's a demand for dollars in the derivatives market. So 
just because you have decoupling of China, Russia from the U.S. dollar, that doesn't mean that there's no demand in the derivatives market, which is a one quadrillion dollar market denominated in U.S. dollars. So there is a demand for dollars out there. And if the Federal Reserve continues these rate hikes, you're going to see a stronger U.S. dollar and it's going to begin breaking out. And that is not going to bode well for gold. And this is the gold mining stock ETF uh, index, not ETF, index. And we were in a strong uptrend and we broke that uptrend last week. This is a weekly chart. So these gold stocks are in a lot of trouble because you have the U.S. dollar pushing price, pushing up higher, putting pressure on gold, silver, and the miners. What it's also going to impact the rising U.S. dollar, if it does break out, is this. Earnings. Microsoft has been coming out. I don't know if they said it this quarter, but the two prior quarters are saying that the strength of the U.S. dollar was hurting their, their earnings in currency conversions back to U.S. dollars. So they were getting hurt. A breakout in the U.S. dollar is not good for these multinationals at all. Oil. Oil's breaking down. It's a good thing. Great to see. Oil putting in lower highs, lower lows, big reversal bar last week, a rejection at resistance. Gasoline prices broke trend. We had a bear flag setup, and we broke that lower band of support on gasoline. So you're seeing food prices. You're seeing energy prices. You're seeing lumber prices which flashed a double top back in early 2022. They've pulled back, yet they're beginning to rally up a bit more, but surprisingly enough, along with housing as well. And if you take a look at – where's my trucking index? I think it's under Dow Jones. Here's the railroad. Actually, the railroads are looking pretty good. They're looking like they're getting ready to break out above resistance. I didn't look at this chart yet. Packaging and containers, they're moving up higher. So there are indications that there is some growth. I'm trying to find the trucking sector. Here it is. Because the trucking sector is in fuego nearing all-time highs on the trucking index. So while we're seeing deflationary pressures in a lot of areas of the economy, we are seeing inflationary pressures in other areas of the economy, vis-a-vis trucking, transport. Transports had a very good week last week. So that, that's our take. I'm, I'm beginning to shift away from the uh, concern about very, very strong inflationary pressures to more disinflation and possibly deflationary pressures but the uh, equity market is in a lot of trouble let's do some chart requests we have plenty of time to go over here we go to the members area check and see who requested what all right some usual suspects here amazon Folks, we're going to be using TrendSpider, automated technical analysis, artificial intelligence at your fingertips. Uh, 35% discount code below. Help support the channel as they are one of our sponsors. Let's go with uh, Amazon. Amazon, let's go with the weekly chart first. We went over this chart on the 30-minute chart club over the weekend. We'll go to that chart in a moment, but uh, Amazon on the week was up significantly higher. You could see here just barely this topping tail, and there was a rejection at resistance, and you could just simply use the click of a button, and all your resistance levels come on or off. 
and uh, big rejection on the week. We're probably going to do a retest of one hundred and seventy-eight, one hundred dollars seventy-eight cents. Now, the daily chart, a pretty bearish day, poor earnings. Believe it or not, it's Shopify that is beginning to hurt them because Shopify handles the stores for Instagram, Facebook, and they're seeing some of their earnings get uh, eroded by Shopify. Now, when you take a look at a 30-minute chart, 30-minute chart, we appear to be putting in some bottoming action. We're struggling here. But to me, this looks more like we're getting ready to move up higher than lower. It really all depends upon the market overall. But we may get a bounce here on Amazon. What else do we have to go over? All right. We, uh oh, that was one of our alerts that just fired off. That's probably the Nasdaq. No, it's not. Ten-year yield, new we. Oh boy. All right. So what happened here is that the ten-year yield. has now put in, this is a weekly chart, a new weekly higher high. And we're going up here, three spots, six, one. So if you get a combination of the rising U.S. dollar and rising yields, it's going to hurt technology in particular. Now, you have certain companies, the big mega caps, that got ahead of this, and they cut headcounts. So they could probably absorb uh, higher yields better than they could the last time we were to forehandle on the 10 year yield. But, you know, once you start getting up to 4.3, 4.4, it's going to be a problem. So, new weekly higher highs on the 10 year yield. NASDAQ futures have bounced back. Is this a bear flag setup? I think it is. Uh, volatility stalled at resistance. The dollar reaccelerating to the upside. Let's check back in with gold. It was bucking the strength in the dollar. Let's see if that's still the case. It's actually gaining strength here. Let's check in with silver again. Silver was down earlier. It remains down, but it looks as though it is stabilized a little bit anyway. A little bit of a bottoming tail here on silver. Okay. All right. Um, GDXU is my other home. Like your pick, RLK, LB, but Ed Boyle. Okay, Tom. Uh, did did you want me to go over any uh, uh, symbol? I can't. I can't go over all these. Um, but uh, if you want me to go over one, let me know that you want. N E E, hey Pete. From Mr. Pete, Nextera Energy. Uh, it's at support. Daily chart is interesting. You're in a consolidation range. I think that it's okay if you want to scratch the itch, nibble here. That's fine. I would just use a stop loss 
on a break below support at around 72 bucks a share, 73 bucks a share. Yeah. You're at the lower end of a trading range on Nextera. The $73 per share mark is a pretty reliable trading range. If it fails, you're coming down here to, you're going to see a 69 handle. Stokes is still very weak on a monthly time frame. I'm not loving it, but if you want to scratch the itch, that's fine. I would not get big here. Uh, Tom, plan to add LITP lithium and AI for chat GPT is like the beginning of the internet. Yeah, it's good. It's, it's going to be mind blowing. It really is. It really is. And it's going to be great for productivity. BITI. I'm surprised this is not doing better. Given the uh, comeback on crypto. Oh, this is the short. That's why. It's a short ETF. Now, this makes sense. Okay. Uh, for a trade, uh, I think it's going to trade sideways for a while longer. I wouldn't. I wouldn't buy this until you broke out above the upper band of resistance here. At around uh, 20, when it breaks out and it pulls back and retests, you can get it at the same price now, if not cheaper, if you wait for the breakout and a retest. So I don't see any compelling reason to go buying this at all right now. Now, on Friday, it did see a breakout. It did have a breakout. So perhaps you'll get some more upside here. I'm not liking the weekly chart yet. The daily chart for a brief trade, maybe. You see Stokes, which were flatlined, lift up. You have a breakout on RSI. So you may have a trade here. I'd be looking to book profits. Right around this declining 20-period moving average at around 31 bucks a share. And I would get out. For Tim, Trin. All right. So the value of uh, the trend lines, folks, I'll do my own first and then I'll overlay the uh the uh ai and you can see that we're in an ascending wedge formation so the amount of more upside potential you have here is diminishing pretty rapidly that doesn't mean it can't move up higher it just means that your uh, resistance level is coming closer and closer and there's not a lot of upside reward if you decide to open up a trade right here, right now. Add to that, let's overlay the automated trend lines. And there you go. Last week, they approached or it approached 1394 and you saw sellers move in. So just be very careful here. You have overhead supply above, as noted by the automated trend lines. And technically speaking, the rising upper band of resistance. Doesn't mean it's broken. Doesn't mean it can't pull back, consolidate, move back higher. It just means that it's extended. And in all probability, you're going to get some selling pressure fairly soon here. Daily view? Yeah. So if you look here on a daily time frame, we were in an uptrend. We broke it on the 30th. They're rallying it back in an effort to try to recapture. I think that you have more downside risk than you have more upside potential. 
I would avoid this. I don't know if I would short it. I would no, I wouldn't short it because you have support immediately below. So this is one where uh, if I had if I had profits here, I'd start making them real, and I would not initiate a new trade. Not sure if you play oversold penny stock. Nah, nah. There's so many other good stocks out there. I, I don't know that they're manipulated. Many, t- I, I, I know that you have S and P stocks that are manipulated. And I know they're manipulating those penny stocks. Bonnie Bean, hello. Uh, would you do a chart of CNI? Of course, I would. CNI for the lovely Bonnie Bean. Okay. Oh, Canadian Railways. Now, I just went over a chart of the railroads a few minutes ago. In fact, let's revisit. The railroads... This is a daily chart. Let's go to a monthly. Uh, they're looking good on a daily time frame, but I'm a little bit worried about them on a monthly time frame. Stokes are rolling over. So here's our take on the rails. What they're trying to do at current is they're trying to break out. So to appreciate to appreciate uh, whether or not to put a trade on here, you need to take a look at the railroad index and say, okay, is the sector in an uptrend or a downtrend? And if it's in a downtrend, are we at resistance or are we at support? So taking a look at this chart here, the monthly time frame, this is the Dow Jones Railroad Index. And you can see that we are at current at resistance. Now, if we break out and we close above this resistance level by the end of the month, oh, that's great. It's, then you're going to probably see a, a resumption of a bull run. But right now, we're in a downtrend channel, and odds favor bears at this point in time until such time as they don't, they break out. So I'm a little bit worried here about the fact that we're at resistance. Momentum is potentially rolling over. Now, we're only a few days into the month. But we have a lot of time to break out. But now let's take a look. Now that we have that information at our disposal, let's take a look at CNI. And we'll go to the monthly chart there and say, okay, how are we looking here? Clearly, it is not trading with the um, the index. Now, perhaps that index is just U.S. railroads, but I would think that they're intertwined. But as with the railroad index, uh, we are in a downtrend channel on a monthly time frame, and... The one difference here is that uh, we are not at the upper band of resistance, unlike the railroad index. In fact, on the month so far, we are bouncing off the lower band of support. I didn't draw this. That's the AI. Boom. Click of a button. So this looks as though it's setting up nicely for a trade especially if the railroad index breaks out. This is a weekly chart. You know, you regret seeing these a couple of weeks later because if you had an alert set down here, you could have got in at resistance. Now you're trying to find the right spot 
it becomes a little bit more difficult because now we're kind of not at the the midpoint of this trading range, but uh, we're not close enough to lows to make me feel comfortable. Stokes are going in the wrong direction. Momentum is putting in lower highs and lower lows. RSI, same deal. Let's go to a daily chart. There's nothing sexy here. I think that it becomes interesting if we break out. If you see a close above 120 on CNI, I think that you could trade it. And I would go to the monthly chart for a price point, and I would look to trade this. Let's do a hypothetical. You get in at 120, trade it up to 128.91, but that's declining. Let's call it 128, get out, and wait to see whether or not you get a breakout. Now, to keep an eye also on the railroad index, because if that's breaking out, well, then the probability of CNI breaking out and through this upper band of resistance increases dramatically. So uh, that's my take on it. Not loving it, but not hating it either. I mean, there's something there. Uh, Jody. Welcome, Jody. Uh TF Hatter, okay, read that. Looking to see if I missed anybody's request. Uh, my word, UNG, yeah, uh, Nat Gas was, was was by far my worst trade of the year so far. By far. Oh, realty income, please, okay. And that is... Uh, Tony B, the last thing I'd say to someone if I was a manager on a trade desk is to short that gas. That things do. Yeah, it is. It, it is. Yeah, there's going to be a rip your face off rally. We are long of it right now. Not as long as we were, but we are long of it. Okay. So, monthly chart. So we hit the upper band of resistance. You could see that, again, these are the automated trend lines, folks. I've never looked at this chart before. I didn't draw these trend lines. Right? The AI did. Every time we hit these upper bands of resistance, we back off. Now, here's the problem for this name. And it may not really be a problem, per se. Uh, we did put in a double top. We did break down to new lower lows. Now we're back above support at 60 let's call it 62 bucks a share we're in an uptrend here but i'm worried about this potentially being a bear flag setup stokes are rising which is good rsi is rising which is good so you're you're seeing momentum build weekly view So you're in, this is an ascending wedge formation on a weekly time frame. It could head up higher. Would I initiate a new trade here? No. You have resistance immediately above at $70 per share. Where do we close? It closed at $7.59. Too much risk, not enough reward. Daily view. You know, if, you, if you're holding this for the income, I wouldn't sell it. Uh, there's no reason to go selling it. But uh, would I initiate a new trade here? Probably not. And really not because of the daily chart per se, but more so due to the, uh, the weekly and monthly charts. I mean, the daily chart, we held support on Friday. Nice bullish reversal bar on Friday. We're probably going to see a pop here. And it could head up to 69 bucks a share, but that's where resistance is. So I wouldn't initiate a new trade here. B 
BTBT. Okay. You're welcome, Bonnie. Anytime. BTBT. I like it. This reminds me of uh, Ring Central and Zoom. Okay, so long term consolidation, and this the longer the consolidation, the greater the validation of any breakout. So we had a breakout in January, we have a continuation move up higher in February, weekly view. Now, it wants to go up higher. Third standard deviation, Bollinger Band, immediately above. Just be careful there. Daily view. Pulled back on Friday after flashing his doji star formation. Uh, RSI a bit overbought and coming in some. I think you could buy this, scratch the itch. And if you want to look for a stop loss, write it around a buck fifty two. If you close down below that mark, I would get out. But it looks long longer term. It looks like it wants to go up. So you may want to give it a little bit more room if you're bullish on it. Uh did we go over boil yet? I, I've been trying not to look at boil, but for you I will. Okay, boil which admittedly I am long of. It's definitely firming up. There's no doubt about it. Let's go to the weekly view. Yeah, weekly view is not pretty. It keeps trying to break out. It gets rejected. Daily view. Now, on a daily view... We broke out above one resistance level on Friday. So we may be setting up for a squeeze here, but I'm not overly bullish on it. Let's go to a four hour view. Yeah, it looks like we're probably going to pop here. Price target number one, uh, $7.67. Stokes hooking up now. So it looks like we're going to pop on boil. Does it last? Don't know. You are welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome, Yoga Mac. Sean, you're welcome, pal. Uh, Jeff, I closed boil and added more UNG. The boil overnight decay killed me. Yeah. Okay, folks, thanks for uh, joining in. Thanks for being here. Everybody have a profitable trading week. And just be careful of this market. Remember where we're at on a technical basis. And remember what's going on. The... The uh, the dollar rallied. We have um, the VIX is coming in a little bit. It looks like equities are beginning to bounce back. Let's bring up the Russell small caps. Uh, they broke 15 minutes support to try and rally back. I think this fails. S&P 500, same deal here. I think this is a dead cat bounce. Bear flag set up. NASDAQ 100. Same deal here. Uh, dollar continues to strengthen. Yields continue to strengthen. Looks like VIX is setting up for a bull flag setup. So as a matter of fact, NASDAQ just broke the lower band of the bear flag setup. So. Be careful here, folks. Please be careful. 
Everybody have a great night. I'll talk to you tomorrow, members. And if you're not on our email, it's 30 Minute Chart Club, link below. Join up and join the conversation. Everybody have an awesome night. Be well.